we're based in California and all over all over the world. So. Okay, that's why I asked if I knew from him. Yes, sir. What? How about now? Okay. Thank you, Simon. All right. So again, uh, I'm Michael Mako from BIS Computer Solutions, and today we're talking about taking a step forward with mobility. Uh, we're a worldwide company uh, based in California. So we have a lot of experience with mobility and software solutions. And this is my colleague, Simon Hablian. Okay, so let's get started here. can advance the slide. Do you guys know how? No. Oh, we have to plug it in. Give me a second. <laughs> this should be 20 seconds. Hopefully it doesn't blue screen on me. What? I'll try not, we'll try not to. Perfect. All right, so on the social spectrum, you can hash M uh, Mobile Nation on today's presentation or obviously SMB Nation. All right, so some quick agenda items are up there. Basically, we're going to take a look at it from a business perspective, a tech perspective, uh, historically, moving forward. And so for whoever our business people in the room, you'll get covered, and any tech, you'll definitely get covered. So uh, let's kind of do a interactive session real quick. Um, who won money last night? Let's see, uh, over 100, over 500? Show of hands. Less than 200? Okay. How much did you, who won the most? Let's, let's find that out first. 200? Who has won 200? Okay, so the gentleman who has 200 comes to me later. I, will, I have a surprise for you, how's that? All right, so how many MSPs do we have in the room? Show of hands with MSPs? Okay, large, good, good amount of MSPs. How many executives within the MSP realm? Okay, technology within the MSP realm? Okay, any developers? Oh, good. What kind of development? Oh, good, okay. Anyone with companies who have development people associated to them? Okay, all right, so this will be a good session today. So let's do a quick na napkin thing uh, like Harry did yesterday with his session. So how many of you use mobility now or have any issues, questions, uh, in in industry concerns, challenges with mobility, anything that your customers are talking to you about? I'll be happy to do a quick little Q Q you know, Q&A real quickly here before we get started. I just want to kind of interact with the audience. And as we're going through the presentation, if there's any questions, please just ask right away. We have a microphone here, and I can bring it down to you. So let, let's kind of get the interactive session going here with uh, uh, what uh, Harry called the napkin session, where we're going to write down everything that kind of relates to what your customers are asking you from an M MSP perspective from mobility. And if it's nothing, then that's fine. We'll learn how that might uh, target us, tar target them today. Yes, sir? Actually managing customers' phones remotely. Managing customers' phones remotely. What a great question. So any phone, like Blackberries, Androids. Uh, fruities, as they call them here. <laughs> if it's a smartphone and you can type on it, they want it to manage it. Okay. So managing from a, like a development side, if you release an app to them or develop or something happens and they call you and you need to support it. Yeah, or call us and they need to support okay. it. Okay. Perfect. So they have log me in one, two, three, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, dealing with that. And there's a log me in rescue that works with any any mobile device out there, Blackberry, uh, iPhones, Androids even Nokia's and so forth. So there's a number of ways you can get into them. Also with the invention of tablets, we can get into tablets from that perspective as well. So it lets you take over the session, even on a 3G connection. While it's gonna be slow, it still lets you get in, reset the firmware, you know, reset whatever needs to happen, and then you, the customer can move on. So we primarily see that in the field service industry with field service uh, engineers who are in the, you know, going out and doing 
field service collecting uh, assets or barcoding information when they pick something up, you know, si similar to the UPS guy. So, you know, imagine that's a situation they're going to call you, obviously, for support, and you need to be able to log into the device right away, support it, fix it, and then allow them to go on their route. Because if they, at the end of the day, don't have a route, you know, and come back with the packages or come back with the assets that they're supposed to get, and they have a route of 500, well, we have a problem, don't we? So it works with 3G, it works with Wi-Fi, it works with 4G. It seems to work well. There are other companies out there that have other uh, remote monitoring capabilities and, and remote um, <clears throat> de de uh, deployment applications to allow you to take over the session. But we use LogMeIn all the time, and it works really well. Again, that's LogMeIn Rescue. I saw Harry came in. No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe he came in and left. OK, any other questions? Yes, sir. Does that uh, include iPads? Yes, that includes iPads. Correct. LogMe and Rescue should work with iPads. We've used it before with iPads and iPhones. Uh, Apple has their own application as well that lets you get in. So basically, you can have managed tools that you can then support your customers in the field. Because obviously, at the end of the day, mobility really exceeds what you know where we are. and it is going to start to dominate the industry. So you're going to start to see a lot more vendors, excuse me, come out with more applications to let you take control of uh, sessions and remote login and so forth. <clears throat> Questions? Anything else? All right, we're going to have to get this, this going here, so I'll have to force it. All right, so anyone have customers who are asking about mobility right now and asking them to de deploy applications? Could you maybe just briefly discuss what what your sure. customers are asking? Well, a, a lot of it is coming from end users. They want to use their iPad, um, whether or not their line of business apps has an app out or not. They're asking us, how, why can't I use my iPad at work? Or I want to be able to use my iPad at work. Okay. So, so the question was really coming from, for the worldwide audience that's out there, um, and I know Harry asked us to tweet it. Um, the worldwide audience, the, the question was, how do end users um, deal with uh, using an iPad and in their existing line of business apps or apps that maybe aren't available to, to the line of business that are at play. Okay. So definitely there's, you know, major companies, everyone around us is having applications for a mobile device, whether it's Android or Apple or, um, and so forth. So obviously the mobility spectrum has grown drastically in the last five years. And in the last year, it's really prominently grown. So you're going to start to see more of the companies coming out with mobile applications if they already haven't. Now, a lot of the legacy applications that you may be dealing with, uh, especially something like QuickBooks or older ERP applications, they don't really have mobile applications. And so today, we'll talk about how you can leverage those existing old infrastructures and build something on top of it for your customer. OK, does that answer your question? Yeah. OK, next. All right, we're going to go to the back here. How about you? You or any of you in the back want to answer questions? Well, I think um, I think uh, you, you kind of hit it with the first one. Uh, in our case, uh, it's less about getting the uh, email and the you know mobile. It's, it's more about uh, being out in the field, uh, starting out with uh, company data, uh, working with people, uh, working out in the field. Mm -hmm. Applications. Applications. Sure. Thank you. So the question for the worldwide audience was uh, dealing with more native app, uh, na native applications that don't necessarily have uh, <coughs> applications and, and supporting them, which I sort of already already addressed. Anyone else want to volunteer? Oh, good. We have volunteers. Thank you. Well, one of the things that just occurred to me is how do we keep the corporate information safe? encrypted on the mobile devices. I haven't seen any product for that. Okay. Good question. Encryption. Uh, the question was encryption and security for a mobile device and keeping that encrypted. So all the development environments that I'm going to talk about today are 100% secure. And we'll talk about some Fortune 100 companies that have come into the marketplace to make it even more secure. You can run it over SSL. You can basically run an SSL certificate on top of the application itself. 
And there's other things that you can do from a security standpoint. And also the carriers, especially Verizon and Sprint, have been coming out with more secure models, especially with the invention of LTE and so forth, that will allow things to be more secure. So it's as secure as, as it's going to get. OK, and so we'll definitely discuss that today as well. All right, we, got, we have to have one more person. Anyone in the back? OK. Should I call out on someone? We'll, we'll just we'll look at it. All right, so obviously your customers are going to start asking about mobility solutions. We'll talk about that today and kind of uh, how you would go about developing a mobile app if you wanted to. All right, so how many of us are Apple users, either iPads or Android, uh, I'm sorry, iPads or iPhones? The fruity applications, as they call them. That's what they've been calling them here. Android? Android tablets, Android phones, okay. Blackberries? Okay, one couple of Blackberries, good. Uh, Nokia's, any, any other type of smartphone, HTC, Windows Mobile? Okay, all right, good. So I will definitely construct, you know, answer all your guys' questions that, that relates to that. Okay, so I just came back from a trade show, uh, a larger trade show conference uh, a couple weeks ago, and it uh, starts with an O, and it's the competitor of Microsoft, okay? So I think we'll kind of get to the big, the, the big component of that. But their major focus at that trade show, and many trade shows I've been to lately, are cloud, mobile, and big data. And the big joke was there, every time someone who owns an island in Hawaii decides, Lanai, decides to say big data, we take a drink. So if we're gonna take a drink of water, how's that? Because it's probably a little too early to start drinking now. But really, that's the major focus you're gonna see today, is cloud, mobile, and big data. So how does big data relate to mobile? How does big data relate to cloud, and vice versa? So a lot of applications today are gonna be coming out that you're gonna start seeing relate to big data or small data meaning you have small amounts of data or large amounts of data and how to deal with it, that on a mobile device, using the cloud to your advantage and deploying to a mobile device. So really that was a huge major focus of the conference and you're gonna to start to see a lot of major focuses around from companies uh, in those three areas that you can then leverage. All right, interesting applications. So here's just a couple interesting applications that I found as I was going around from a business perspective and also uh, a uh, you know, individual perspective. If anyone else has any other type of application they want to share, please feel free to raise your hand and you know, share, share with the audience. Again, I want this to be an inter interactive session. So we have React Mobile, which is on Android and iOS for both iPad and for uh, tablets, as well as iPhone and <clears throat> iPod and uh, smartphones. So it's really hardware agnostic from that standpoint. Uh, it's, an, it's a safety emergency application that allows you to go in and create a set of contacts that you want to notify in the event of an emergency. So you're in an emergency situation and you need to let someone know that, you know, I'm in an emergency. Well, you can press a button similar to that on an alarm pad, a keypad, and it will count down, allow you to call 911. It'll count down and it'll then broadcast to your contacts. A, a text message, and also a message to them with your exact, your exact GPS location. Um, so it's a great app for that of in, for if you're in an emergency situation or if you find yourself needing help, you can press that button and it emails your contacts. Your contacts then know what to do. They can call, contact the police department. They can say, oh, he's in this location and they can come help you. So God forbid some major emergency happens, you have a heart attack or someone's holding you up or something to that effect. You know, this definitely this application can come in handy. And if the person who's causing an issue to you says, well, you know, I notice you're trying to get help, you can go in and put a silent code in, like similar to that of an alarm, and it then allows you to, uh, it, it lets them know that, oh, it's not activated anymore, but it's really activated, and at the same time sent another SMS with your other GPS location. So it, it's a great app out there, and I encourage people to download it. Uh, right now it costs about $1.99, however, the new version's coming out in a couple weeks, and it'll be free, and then you guys can download that. Moshpick is a new way of photo sharing. From the standpoint of you can take photos, uh, take photos, it adds it to your Moshpick account, and then you can add people to come look at those folder, that folder or that set of uh, pictures that you may have or videos, and then they're you know, you're basically sharing amongst a group of people from a social perspective. And so as you add pictures, as they add pictures, it puts them into a pot. 
Okay, so it's great for businesses too who need to upload files or upload pictures and so forth. You can create a business site and a, a social site. So it kind of combines the two together. Documents to go, I'm sure you guys have all heard of that. It lets you edit Word documents on your iPad or iPhone. And there's a cloud component as well. Dropbox, we've all heard about that. <coughs> yes? Yeah, I've got two. Sure. your phones, you've got a lot of really personal, private information, so if it gets stolen, you need to be able to access it and wipe it if you have to, or find it. And so uh, Lookout's a really good one. And, and then I, I do a lot of cycling, so if I'm on the road, something happens, can somebody find me if I can't push a button and say, hey, I'm in an emergency? So this, my wife can locate me wherever I am when I'm riding. And then plan B is another one, which is you, you don't have anything on your phone, and you can push down something to the phone, and, and it installs on the phone, and then you can find the phone and wipe the phone or make it do an alarm or whatever like that. Okay. From the standpoint of React Mobile, it has the same feature. The update that's coming out in a couple of weeks has a, what they call a follow me. You can trigger the follow me. If you think you're in an emergency situation or you think you're in a potentially hazardous situation, and it lets you move forward, and it follows you the entire time. So it's something similar. So, or if you're going cycling, as you said, and you want your wife to follow you, she can follow you, don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh, she'll find you either, she'll find you either way, I promise. <laughs> okay, uh, Hopspot and Foursquare, we kind of know what those are. Any questions that relate to that? Anyone have any other apps that they like we can talk about now? Yes, sir. Oh, boy, in the back. Okay. SkyDrive in the mix, good. Anyone in the other back? Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So he brought up Citrix and Citrix Receiver, so that allows you to RDP or something similar, you know, remote into a session, correct? They also have a number of RDP applications out there that can let you RDP into your customer server and uh, take care of business and fix any technical issues or anything that they may have. There's a number of them out there. Some of them are free, some of them are more expensive, and you know, just pick and choose. So it's a half, half, half dime a dozen, yes? Do you use uh, Mocha RDP? What's it called, Bacardi? Mocha? Or Bocha. Bacardi. 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 Okay, and it's called? Mocha? Mocha. Mocha RDP, okay, good. Anyone else? Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, card Biz Scan Premier uh, lets you scan business cards and it translates those business cards into images, puts them into Outlook, puts them into your contact management application. It syncs with the cloud as well. It's a great application, I use it. And uh, Google Translate helps with obviously any international component. If you're going internationally, it attempts to translate English to whatever version is there. Okay, quick history. So we see where mobility is today, and let's kind of take a quick history lesson real quick. I think my professor in, at the university would be real mad if I didn't do anything with history. So we saw mainframes and terminals, which really didn't, you know, they were all connected hardwired with a serial cable. We saw how that went, and then we kind of moved to PCs, and then to the evolution of laptops, and the laptops and notebooks, netbooks were all really the first time that you could get something into the field to provide more productive situation for your customers, and really those, Things from the standpoint of PCs and laptops are there today, and mobility is adding an adjunct to it. It's adding a component to what they already have as an infrastructure. So it allows you to now support an additional infrastructure and make additional service money, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. All right, and we came out with the days of PDAs, and boy, did we have issues when those came out in terms of connectivity and so forth. And then we have smartphones and tablets uh, from to, you know, today's perspective. <coughs> So what kind of issues or things that we have in the, in the past still, quick history, PDAs, we had, PDAs were out there with the Dell Axioms, we had you know, the Palm Pilots, we had a lot of handspring, you know, a lot of different you know, devices that came out. The issues with that were, A, if you wanted to make a native application, it was very difficult, and the other issue was getting the information back to the host, or back to the server, if you weren't going to dock it in the cradle, or if you wanted to use a modem or a, what they called a CF card slot at the time. It was the first of its kind to have modems and sleds. Remember the days of the sled, you, you pop the sled in and a CF card slot would work over 
what would be equivalent to a 3G connection today, probably 1X, you know, CDMA back then. It was not easy. The compatibility, the drivers, it was a big disaster. And it, it really caused a lot of problems. We firsthand experienced all of them. I'm sure you guys back there, anyone back there experienced any of these situations I'm talking about historically? Okay, good. All right, so we had Palm OS and Pocket PC back in the days and smartphones. We had older HTC devices that came out after that that had integrated cards and integrated modems. Those worked much better. That was like the leap forward. And from that perspective of not having external devices with external drivers and things you had to plug in and multiple chargers and batteries, it was, it was much better when they were all kind of integrated in. So we had older HTC, HTC devices and obviously BlackBerry continued to have their devices that worked as well. Okay, and from a development platform history perspective, it was an absolute nightmare. I mean, just look on the board here, how much you had to develop. From BlackBerry, you had to use Java-based applications to, to develop a mobile application. From Palm OS, you had to use C or Pocket C, Windows Phones, .NET, or what was equivalent to that back then. And you had iPhone, AKA Fruity. You had to have, in today's environment, you have to have Objective-C, Android, Java, and Symbian, Nokia, you know, you had to have ME or uh, Java ME or C++. So what did this do? It caused a barrier of entry for the MSP to develop an application or even support an application for your customer because it makes it just very difficult from that perspective. And if you were even trying to deploy an application or develop one, it virtually made it really expensive. And again, another barrier of entry from a technical perspective as well as a financial perspective. It was very difficult. So you only found the Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies dealing with mobile applications. <clears throat> drastically in, uh, increase the development costs. Why? Because you had to have multiple development platforms, multiple testing environments, multiple testing uh, SKUs, uh, testing scripts for every single device. Uh, anyone out there ever experienced this type of situation? I was speaking to someone the other day who came by my booth that said he had an issue with hardware that related to Apple. Is he here? He was going to come by. No, didn't make it. Okay. Well, he was saying how he had a real issue because back in the days with PCs and 386, he used the term of 386s and 486s, how they would always develop the software to be a little bit better than the hardware so that as hardware would increase, you guys could take advantage of that. So he was kind of having a concern with today's environments with Apple where they would say, look, you know, the iPad 1 really can hardware-wise run OS 6 and some, you know, similar with, with the Androids, but Apple chooses not to allow it to happen. So what do you do as, an, as a developer or as an, a system integrator or an MSP who have to support multiple development platforms. We'll get into that in a minute. It makes it a lot easier now. So historically speaking, it was a big nightmare. We've now moved on and we can kind of move to the step today. So mobility is on everyone's forefront and of everyone's mind. You have tons of companies out there building mobile applications. You can download them from the iTunes store or Google Play. Everyone knows about that. So now the, the trick is for you to leverage that and as an MSP and move forward and allow your customers to take advantage of it. And again, certain applications are out there that allow you to do that. There are certain applications that you can't, and we'll discuss for the ones that you can't how we can allow you to deploy an application as an MSP. <clears throat> Any questions on that, or everyone's kind of seen how mobility has evolutionized. Any questions that relate to what I've talked about so far? Okay, again, if there are, please just uh, answer or ask them. So really, mobility has changed and augmented the way we do business today. It's provided more productivity gains. It's uh, provided more productivity gains to the end user. It's provided more productivity gains to you as a company to then allow your end user to take advantage of that. So from those two perspectives, that's there. We've had, we definitely see a reduction in errors uh, from the standpoint of, like, let's say, anyone in field service or anyone in, with sales automation in the field. That definitely is, definitely get reduced. And we have now real-time access to data. And so in real time, we can access data and have databases updated and information provided. And therefore, then reporting can be done in real time. And we definitely have an increased ROI. Okay, so as SMB partners and MSP, you know your customers the best. It's your job to come up with ways that they can take advantage of mobility or take advantage of additional solutions that you can provide them. All right, so let's say someone's running quick, someone came to me the other day and said that they have QuickBooks online edition, that they have some mobile applications, but it doesn't do a lot in that area, but also the enterprise versions don't really have any. So there are connectors now from QuickBooks, there are connectors from a lot of third party companies that allow you to develop a mobile application with these connectors. And so with the connectors are APIs, you know, web services, you can call and get those things kind of developed. 
but a lot of you may be saying, well, I'm not an, you know, I'm just an MSP, I'm not a developer, it's really difficult, so we'll get to how it's not that difficult here in a minute. And if you really say at the end, well, I just can't do it, there's other alternatives as well that you can uh, take advantage of so you can still make money and provide additional service to your customer. So the biggest thing is to understand your customer's pains and frustrations. Uh, many business pains turn into revenue opportunities for you. So someone comes to you and says, well, you know, I can't see my sales data in the field. The, uh, my ERP application won't let me see sales data or inventory information. Well, that's their biggest pain. So that legacy application obviously doesn't have an app. You can now develop an app or find someone, a uh, mobile development partner, to develop an app for you that you can then leverage, resell, okay, or take advantage of uh, revenue and licensing costs and you know, really partner with that person from a partner perspective so he's an adjunct to the way you do business. All right, so now that allows you now from a mobile standpoint to have additional solutions and additional value to your customer for you to make more money. Any questions? So when you're going in and, you know, obviously you guys do this every day. You, you talk to your customers. I mean, some main things to ask are, can this save my customers money? How can I avoid hiring additional people and have additional people and labor costs? And if I can put in a mobile solution to help with that, you know, how can that, that definitely, from a business owner's perspective, and I'm one, I'd love it if someone said, you know, you have to hire less people and you can get maximum productivity out of it. It's okay, Simon, don't worry. <laughs> um, how can you increase productivity? How can you provide additional value? What value can you provide to your customer from a mobility standpoint to, to, to you know, allow them to succeed, because that just, mobility, again, is another adjunct to the way we do business, so, you know, keep your brains turning, and as you have questions, please ask me, and I can give you suggestions, but it, again, will allow you to have additional service revenue and additional revenue from that standpoint, and you can now support your customer deeper than you did before, and your competition probably won't have that capability. So that, that again, attaches you to your customer even more than you may already be. So definitely look into the mobility sector when you're looking into that. <clears throat> All right, so what does this mean for you from an MSP standpoint? Is it gives you the ability to make more money, like I said, a deeper bench to your customers and additional service revenue. Kind of talked about that. Anyone think of anything else that that might give you that I didn't mention? <clears throat> okay. Oh, sorry. More things to support more. Exactly. So, yeah, so you have more things to support. Uh, the, the answer was, or the question was, more things, to, I'll have more things to support and more things to fail, though, so therefore additional things that potentially I can help with. So, yeah, additional service revenue is kind of where I, I, I look at that. I took service revenue into, you know, your ongoing support from a, either a managed services perspective or ongoing support from a time and material T&M perspective. I kind of consider service revenue, so... All those things, this, the device fails, the device needs help, you need to go in and you know, fix the email connection, you need to go in and fix the application, you know, all of a sudden Foursquare or Facebook doesn't work, you know, that happens. Or worse yet, the, the you know, mission critical enterprise business application that I'm using every day just stop working and you have to reinstall it. So you know, that, that could take some time. Okay, so now, I'm going to use these three examples of an enterprise application, time and billing, order entry. Uh, there's tons of other applications and examples from a horizontal and vertical platform perspective, but I want to kind of give the idea for everyone as to when a custom approach is needed with software and when you could probably take a horizontal application or an app that's already created to help your customer. Okay, so a custom app would be someone with a legacy ERP system or a legacy application or an idea that a customer has that is trying to get into the mobile area or is, has an idea and you could say, oh, okay, let's use a mobile solution for this. It's not in the marketplace. You're going to have to develop. You're going to have to team and find a partner to help you do that. And, or you're going to have to find someone on your staff that can do the development. But again, in a couple slides here, we'll get to how easy that is and how you can leverage those things. So time and billing. Uh, order entry, someone's placing an order entry order in the field in a legacy ERP application or keeping tra time in a legacy ERP application, or they have some enterprise-based solution that needs development. Obviously, a custom solution is going to be needed for that. All right, when a already created system, you know, app is out there. So let's say you have a customer who, you know, you're an MSP for them, and they have one or two people in the field, or, you know, three or four, 
And it's really a smaller company. It's very mainstream. There's nothing major going on. They need to keep track of inventory, keep track of billing. There's applications on the market for that. I mean, you can search the internet, you can search the marketplace, you can search iTunes everywhere. You can find those applications, download them yourself. You can sometimes call the manufacturer, call them and say, look, I'd like to partner with you. How can we figure this out? And say, you know, I have a customer who wants to, down, you know, to, to use this. A lot of times they'll give you a free code that you can download the application. You can download it, install it, figure it out, then go show it like a proof of concept to the customer and they'll be happy as clams, promise. I've done it many times, it works, and I have many case studies to, to show it. Any questions? Does that kind of make sense? Because this is kind of the pivotal moving off point for the rest of the presentation is from an enterprise to a, a basic horizontal perspective. Questions, anything? Okay. Okay, so I've kind of already discussed how uh, the business can benefit from mobility. Improve business processes, improve productivity in the workforce. Uh, ensure business continuity, boost employee efficiency, and reduce operational costs. Those are all things that any business owner, any of your customers would love it if you came out with something to help them deal with that. And then you can justify it in your proposal to them from a mobility standpoint, and that's what sells the mobile, is value, mobile value, putting them together. That's really how you deploy and sell a mobile solution in today's marketplace, in my experience at least. <clears throat> okay. So here's just some other examples of where we've seen mobility in the past. It's vastly growing, it's going to change, it changes every 10 days, there's a new mobile app out there, there's something new. Again, it goes back to where the paradigm shift is occurring. Oh, just a quick, quick uh, thing. How many of us deal with horizontal customers who are pretty much all the same type of customer versus a vertical customer that maybe has a specific market niche? Like I would define a vertical customer as maybe like a jeweler in the retail space, so retail would be horizontal, a jeweler would be vertical. Yes, sir. Do you think, can you think of any, you know, it's, it's a lot easier from a vertical perspective to provide value to a mobile solution or to, an, to your customer? Could you think of anything that? I'm not understanding the question. Okay, no, I just said, who has customers in the vertical spectrum versus the horizontal spectrum? So like for example, I would define the horizontal spectrum as a retail facility and maybe a specific type of retailer would be a jeweler. Okay, and so, yes? Uh, it's probably what they call a proxy. Okay. And proxy is really one of the variables that's being Okay, yes, exactly. So we see field force, we see trucking, uh, automation, driver automation, driver tracking, um, <clears throat> those types of things in, the, in those verticals. So a lot of times if you have customers in a specific vertical market, it's a lot easier to provide value to them and justify to them why you know, a mobile solution is needed. Okay. All right, so now we move to sort of the technical, technical component of it. As I mentioned before, it was very difficult to develop a mobile application. Everyone needed very different uh, platform or different uh, development environments and so forth. Who's heard of Titanium or PhoneGap? Oh boy, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Uh, titanium and PhoneGap both are the two major development environments in the marketplace today that allow for cross-platform development. So what does that mean? It means that you can take a common set of code and export to all those devices, and I'll get to that in a minute. So now, it took what we had before as a major barrier of entry and brought it down to the MSP level, and it brought it down to your guys, you know, the small business level, to now promote and sell to, to your customers, for them to develop if they have an IT staff, or for you to develop, or find a partner who can help you develop and augment what you do in a real partnership, you know, MSP type fashion. So again, we now took, when people want, well I want it on the iPhone, I want it on the Android, I want it for this device, I want it for that. Well it was really, really expensive before, now it's much cheaper. I'll describe how kind of some of those things go. All right, again, titanium and phone gap. When uh, there were a lot of players in the marketplace that tried coming out with a common cross-platform development environment and these two won, okay? Now, Anyone know what the major issue with PhoneGap, I, since no one really knows what PhoneGap was, can anyone guess what the major issue with PhoneGap was when it first came out? What? Slow, that's one, yes. Um, any other? I'll give you a hint, which is, uh, <clears throat> when you have a critical update for Windows that comes out, it usually relates to what? Exactly. 
PhoneGap had a major, major security problem and continues to as their, because it, it's an open source code base, as this gentleman here was mentioning. It's slow code, but it's open source based. And so people could deploy an application, you could kind of hack the application, and you also could have major security flaws. Okay, so Titanium came out, those issues were resolved. It's a great application environment to provide a native application, meaning the application resides on the device itself, or a mobile application that works with the mobile web browser that's out there. It does both. Now, large corporations such as IBM and Oracle have all come out with versions of PhoneGap that deal with security, that deal with the slow code, that deal with a number of the holes that PhoneGap had. So if you want to go the PhoneGap route, they have, you have major players in the industry that can help you out with that. Okay. <clears throat> so the common set of code for PhoneGap and Titanium are based, all based on JavaScript, HTML5, or CSS, okay? And so you can develop in those common platforms. How many of you have people or know people that knows those, those environments? Okay. So you can develop in that common platform and some magic, some presto, and wham, bam, you have your apps. And it really is that simple. We've developed applications, and yes, I understand we're a developer, but we've developed applications in this common set of code with JavaScript and HTML5, and you write the code, you export it out, and out comes a version natively for Apple, natively for Android, natively for Windows Mobile and 8, Blackberry, and so forth. So you get your common set of code, and therefore, again, reducing that barrier of entry that was our yes, sir. Either HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, combination of the, the three, either however you want. You write it in PhoneGap, you write it in Titanium, and as you write it, it exports out. I have some sample code, I'll, I'll show it here in a minute. Any other questions? Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, Windows 8 phone, you know, for the, the, the mobile component for Windows 8. Okay. Sorry, I think I flipped the, the word there. Okay. Any questions before we get to tech talk? Because we're going to do tech, tech stuff. So, is everyone, everyone seeing? Ha yes. How do you get your uh, custom in house apps onto the phone? Because it sounds like there's a lot of marketing. Okay. Good question. How do you get your custom app, like an enterprise app, that legacy app that doesn't have a solution, onto the phones since it's not in the marketplace? That's where a custom app would be needed. But you can use JavaScript, HTML5, CSS to develop the mobile component. And then at that point, you need to have a feed of data from the legacy application. So most legacy applications can give you a CSV file. It can give you a comma delimited file. It can give you an export. Some of them can even go as far as a web service and so forth, so then you can, that's where I talked about the cloud earlier, that's where you can meet those two in the cloud. For those of you who like the cloud, that's for, if you have an on-premise solution, that's where you can feed the data into the server. You can grab the data from the database, the mobile database, and connect the two databases together. Um, PhoneGap and Titanium, but Titanium especially has a lot of already predefined code that you can use to grab legacy applications, grab CSV files, grab common delimited files, make your life a lot easier when you're going into this, okay? It's really not rocket science. I mean, it, it, there's some complicated things out there. And, you know, we've really definitely pushed the limits to mobile devices. And from that standpoint, since we're an actual firm that specializes in that. But from the standpoint of an MSP who wants to nibble in it, wants to f understand how this works, it's really, it's really something you can do. And if you can't, there's definitely there's tons of development partners out there that are happy to work with you to, to augment something. Next question. Okay. All right, tech talk. So I'm not the biggest technical guy, but uh, I had one of my senior developers give me some information. So as you can see, this is an example of the simulation in Titanium. So on the left, you have uh, a simple program for Android, and on the right, you have a simple program for Apple and iOS. Again, we put in the code that you're about to see here in a minute, and out came the uh, exports for both of them in the, common, in, in the common languages. So as you can see, they look very similar. All right, so deploying seamlessly with multiple platforms and make native components and single databases very easy. All right, so here's some common set of code. I wonder if I can zoom in. No. Maybe. No, 
Oh, sorry. What? Screen. Oh, you're right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so here's what an example of the code looks like. If anyone wants to come to me afterwards, I can show it to you. Uh, or I have a booth here, you can come see me at my booth. <clears throat> uh, but this is an example of the code base in, CS, in JavaScript and how you can deploy the code and then it deploys it out from that standpoint, okay? So web developers who are here, feel free, write at home, it's very simple. Mobile applications are authorized using standard JavaScript. We have great documentation. Uh, there's a huge, vibrant development community and const constantly evolutionizing platforms. So the development community in Titanium is huge. There is a huge community out there of people who will help you. They're on the IRC chats. They're on all the chat sessions. There's uh, talk groups. There's everything on the web that relates to Titanium. Titanium has a professional services division that will provide support to you. If you want to get a professional contract with them, you can call them 24 hours a day. They will help you with the, the most simple question. They have great support. Great everything, but there's a huge you know, open source community out there and a huge development community that is constantly talking about this because this is where that's going. Uh, <clears throat> evolutionary platform, so now the question might be, okay, iPhone 4, 3, 3GS was out or iPhone 4 is out and now iPhone 5. Well, the difference with the iPhone phone 5, we all know it's thinner, it's lighter, has a bigger camera, better screen, it's bigger. Well, how does that screw up the apps? Well, it does cause an issue with the apps, okay? now. Thankfully, Apple, when they came out with the iPhone 5, they were smart enough from the development standpoint to at least put the bar around it for those developers who need to come out with an update. And I'm sure as you, if you have an iPhone or an Android, as they do it, there's constant updates going on and you just update it. So from the development standpoint, the development environment standpoint, they're very good. Titanium is very good about coming out with a platform and an update to their platform at no cost when new uh, updates come out. They're Johnny on the spot, it comes out fairly quickly, and a lot of times you get it before anyone else does, before the actual public does, so that you can make those minor changes that are there and deploy the application and deploy an update out. <clears throat> Again, if you're stuck during deployment, you can hashtag those, and there's a number of IRC channels and so forth out there. Okay. So learn more about Titanium, go to appcelerator.com. There's phonegap.com. I mentioned Oracle has an application. It's being released here shortly. It's called Mobile ADF. It hasn't been released, although you can go to oracle.com, search Mobile ADF or Google Mobile ADF. It'll come up. Again, it's based on PhoneGap. IBM has one already out there. They actually charge per submission, though, versus Oracle doesn't, and PhoneGap itself doesn't. So, IBM has a little bit of a different business model that's associated to that. How are we doing on time? Yeah, 12 minutes. 12 minutes, okay. So now I'm gonna take it up for Q&A. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Wait, what happened here? Yeah. All right, so we've seen the devices out there. The, in the enterprise space, there are specific mobile devices that are very ruggedized, very dur durable. They obviously cost a lot of money, so if you have customers in the enterprise space who could use those, there's good margin on those. You can make mar you know, uh, money from the hardware perspective as well. It's about 30, 40% margin, depending on the, the manufacturer and so forth. And there's support options for the hardware. There's tons of ways in the mobile space for a small SMB to make money, I promise. It, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, questions, please answer them. I mean, if it has nothing to do with this, I'm here. I, I probably have dealt with it before. If I don't, I'm happy to get you an answer. So please answer, please ask questions. Yes, sir. Okay, like an existing ERP? Uh, just somebody's already done the development on an iOS device, and now they're starting to see Android devices come into their marketplace. How, you know, I understand Titanium, if I designed with Titanium from the very beginning, I've okay. got a single platform. Correct. And it's not based on the common set of code? But that's, yeah. That's okay. <clears throat> if I said it wouldn't be a problem, I'd be lying. So it's a problem. 
and I give you the example. A customer came to me, they had developed an application, they hard coded it using, uh, I think it was X, uh, X I'm sorry, um, uh, Java for the Android, and they wanted it for the iPhone. So they had already hard coded it, they had it all in the development environment that you know, wasn't titanium, in the raw set of code that's designed for those, those devices. They said, look, we want it in the iPhone, how do we do that? I said, well, there's two ways. We can develop it using iPhone-specific development applications, or we can move to Titanium so that we can, and we can leverage the existing database that they already had in the data. So if you po point it as, look, yes, we're gonna take one step backward, but we're gonna take five steps forward in the long run. So the step backward is we have to move development environments, but we can leverage the data and the database exactly, and we can leverage some of the connectors and so forth, and I can get into it a little bit later with you if you want, but <clears throat> we have to then develop it, obviously, in titanium, in those common you know, code base, and then it'll export to Apple and to iPhone, but the value for the customer is that they now have uh, iPhone, Android, you know, other platforms, but as changes occur, as they need things specifically, you develop it in one common set and move it out versus having to have two. Does that answer the question? It answers the question, it's a bitter pill for them to swallow up front. Yes. It's a bit of a pill, exactly. To swallow up front, but moving on, it's better. Uh, that's why a lot of times, <clears throat> what you could do from your standpoint is if they have the Apple already in place and you need the Android, develop the Android in Titanium, and then deploy it just using that to Android, and then bring the app, do, do the Apple later. Yes, sir. Okay, it, he's, uh, the question was, if I go out and get PhoneGap or Titanium, what does a good test environment look like from a testing perspective, correct? Right, so, so, okay, so do I do it on a PC, do I do it on the devices? I'm gonna answer that in two ways. F to develop for iOS, you must have a Mac. You can use, download Titanium onto an IBM to develop in any other platform, but they don't give you the connectors for Apple, for the Mac. Okay, so for the Android, or I'm sorry, for Apple or the iPad. They won't give you those. So for that, develop on a Mac. That's why I say develop on a Mac in general from that standpoint. Or you can do, you can go out there and if you're a Linux guy, you can create a virtual machine and download on you know, the Mac OS. I've seen people download Mac OS before in a non-Mac environment, so that would get around that if you are smart enough to do that. I've seen it on there, it's on the internet. It, there's ways to, to go about that. So from that standpoint, uh, it's best to develop with a Mac if you can. Or if you're only gonna develop for Android and not do Mac, then you can use a PC or anything else from that standpoint. Now from a testing perspective, you brought up a great point, which was, I'm gonna actually go back to my slide that has the common code base, or the two, the two pictures. So here's Apple and Android obviously being developed on a Mac. This is in the simulated environment. There are countless times that you're gonna find that in the simulated environment it works, but once you export the file to the common set of code for those individual devices, you bring it up on those devices, and boom, the whole world explodes and everything goes to crash in a handbag. That'll happen. So that's why it's very important to, A, when devices come out, get those devices to test on behalf of your customer. Again, a way that you can make some additional money for the customer, and make sure that those things are taken care of, because there's countless times that those things aren't quite together. Next question. Yes, sir. Um, well, the idea here is to monetize mobility, right? Mm -hmm. Have you seen any applications that manage the mobile plan to minimize the customer expense? The question was, uh, have I seen any applications that will minimize the customer's plans? Yeah, the mobile like plan the, the, the mobile plan with the, either the data or the minutes, correct? Right. I've not seen any, but I'm sure if I do a Google search here any minute, I'll come up with something. But I have not seen anything. I have seen uh, ways that the carriers will allow you to find out exactly how much data you have left and how much minutes you have left by hashtagging it or by sending a text, and then it sends it back. But an actual mobile application itself, I've well, not it seen, be, but I've never, I haven't looked, to be honest. Yeah, well, there are a few out there, and that's what they do is they do a complete plan, right? You've got a company with 50 phones, and they will modify the plan on an ongoing basis. And it 
reducing the amount of investment. Okay, maybe I didn't understand what you said. I'm sorry. Like, did, did you want a way that you could just quickly launch an app and it would tell you how many minutes or how much data you have left? About a, a management functionality here, right, that the MFP can do. Oh, I'm sorry. For the customer to manage their plans to minimize their costs, because you know suddenly the guy may be making international calls and not have an international plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, there are apps out there for that, and we actually use those because we. From an MSP's perspective, I've seen a lot of companies go out there and they will purchase the phone, get them on a plane on the customer's behalf. That way they don't have to deal with cost, calling customer service, having phone issues, having all these things. You have direct access to them. There's a lot of tools on the internet that do allow you to do that. Do you have a list of those? Or? I have them on my computer. I can, I can get them to I'd you. Like to get them. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, how do you get the app installed on the phones? Okay, great question. So that kind of goes into the testing and deployment app uh, question that the gentleman over here asked. So on Android and uh, Windows phones, you can just export the file to like an executable and load it onto the device and go from there. Apple's a little bit more difficult. You have to use what they call a program called Test Flight. It's a free application that will basically act as the app store and they have this for Android as well. So you can have a development community out there. You can have a list of people who are going to help you test the app, give you feedback, user feedback on your app. You basically download TestFlight uh, for the Apple, and there's a version of TestFlight or equivalent and equivalent as well to Android. And you get the Apple IDs talking and everyone's provisioning account, you know, their mobile ID. There's a special mobile ID that you put into the test flight application. It downloads test flight onto the device, and then it basically is your private. App Store or your private Google Play at that point. And you select the users, you select and manage from that standpoint who gets access to, access to it and who doesn't. So that's great for A, testing and deployment from the standpoint of I need user feedback, I need community feedback, but it's also good if you want your own private enterprise application or no one else to have access to it. You can set those up and deploy it. Does that answer your question? Okay. Next question. No more. Come on. What's the coolest app you built? What's the coolest app I've built? Um, I'd say the coolest one from stretching the limits, let's say, of titanium and stretching the limits of mobile development right now, ironically enough, is the React mobile app that I talked about before. That tends to stretch a lot of limits, but it tends to, okay, I'm getting the cue here. We have to wrap up two minutes or? Yeah. Okay, great. So two minutes we have. Uh, that stretches it. Uh, Mosh pick definitely stretched our, the, the environments, but <clears throat> the actual really coolest application I would say from that standpoint is there's apps out there in development environments that we have access to that allow you to, from a, like a, let's say a retail perspective, so if you have a retail customer, you can do a 3D virtual reality on an iPad of their store and do a virtual checkout of a, like a 3D augmentation of the thing. So for example, Prada is using it right now where you can go up, you know, you have those QR codes, right? Forget the QR codes, those are things of the past. You go up with your iPhone or iPad, you point it at the shoe that you want, it says, oh, this is the Prada and here's the model number and here's the, the price and all that, it comes up instantly, you check out and boom, away you go. Next time you have Prada shoes at, at your doorstep. So it's great for retail stores that are smaller, that don't have a presence in other states, and it's, an, you know, it's a 3D reality, so it's high definition in graphics. You can see exactly the store, everything around it. You can see uh, the shoes exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool stuff. And I actually have an example of that at our booth in 305 that I can show it to you. So if there's anyone out there, hotels have used it. Um, a lot of places in Vegas, as I said, have started to, to use that type of technology. So it's great for customer experience applications, and that's a whole new set of environment, environment and development tools. Um, but that, that's great for those types of people. All right, last question. We had two, we have two minutes. We have probably about a minute. Any other questions? Again, if you have, want to come talk to me, I'm up here after the, uh, afterwards if you have any questions or comments. But thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. <laughs>
The sun shines bright As it moves across my face I feel the light And everything is in its place Ooh. I woke up feeling great Ooh. Today was made for me Ooh. And life is good the way it should The way it was meant to be And it's a beautiful day Children playing in the park while birds are singing. I am walking, I am walking, and I am laughing, I am laughing. Life is perfect, I'm not trying, it's just happening. And it's a beautiful day. in me. A little more bite, a little less bark, a little less fight, a little more spark. This conference absolutely exceeded my expectations. It's been great to, to just 